Having a written legal will is important, but more than half of Aussie adults don't have one. Vision has entered into a partnership with SafeWill, a leading online will writing platform to provide you with an easier and more affordable way to write or update your will. As part of the Vision family, we want you to know about a way that you can write your will for free. Start the process now and complete it at no cost during Leave a Legacy Week from February 26 to March 3rd. See all the details at vision.org.au slash legacy. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. As you know, we are not afraid to get into even what might be some difficult conversations at times. And you might appreciate that there are some difficult Bible passages. And as Christian believers, we want to be able to explore some of those things so that we've got some light and some insight into how to handle ourselves when certain situations arise. And some situations like Christians being defrauded or scammed These could present some sort of challenge, and yet we have some scripture that says don't be afraid of such things. Well, Bill Muhlenberg's been talking through these issues in some articles that he's written this week, and he's back with us. Hey, Bill, welcome back to 2020. Many thanks, Neil. Bill, some might even say, uh, you know, why is the Bible hard to understand in places? Uh, How do you describe that? Well, we know it can be. Uh, Peter certainly said that much, right? He talked about some of the passages in Peter or Paul can be a bit difficult to understand. And, you know, obviously, if everything was just peachy clear, uh, well, there'd be no disagreement, probably wouldn't need teachers, pastors. So it's, you know, we need the Holy Spirit. But, yeah, there's some passages that can be difficult. So, uh How we understand them, get them in context and so on is important. Well, let's talk about one you've been writing about this week. And it's from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, and zeroing in on verse 42, which says, Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. What's so difficult here, Bill? Yeah, well, I mean, it can be difficult. It can be, in one sense, easy enough to understand. Let me give context. I had something on the social media the other day about, you know, if you're on Facebook or something like that, you get friend requests all the time. You got to check them out. Uh, One gal was obviously a scammer. She had Bible passages and stuff, but the first post on her page was, help me, I'm I'm stuck in a hotel and I need money to pay my bills. Uh, You know, as soon as I saw that, I thought, "Uh, look, sorry, lady, you're on your own. Uh, There's so many scams out there, so many con artists. Uh, And, well, uh, so that's what I basically posted in my uh, own Facebook post. Then somebody came along and said, yeah, well, Bill, what about Matthew 542? So we had a little discussion. I thought, well, okay, I'll do a whole article on this because obviously, uh, you know, there isn't full clarity here. Uh, Generally speaking, the principle is to give and give generously and, you know, don't be tight fisted with what you have. Uh, But many things can be said. One, nowhere does it talk about money, right? It simply says if you're asked for something. So, right, somebody knocks on my door, says, hi, can I uh, have your car? Well, uh, I suppose you can think and pray about it. You might want to talk about it with the guy a bit more, you know. But generally speaking, you know, there's a thing called discernment. We don't want to be gullible. We don't want to be foolish. In fact, in the same Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, don't give your pearls before swine. So the short answer is, yeah, we got to have a bit of wisdom here, a bit of knowledge, not every request for help or money is something we necessarily are indebted to do or obligated to do. So some checks and balances might be a part of who we are. And you might have a little bit of compassion too for uh, the fact that there are people who are genuinely in need. And if there are scammers on the rise right now, it may be that scammers may be disadvantaging Uh, Those who actually are genuinely in need because we might be much more reluctant to be so generous. 
Yeah, well, that's right. If you get burned a few times, then you'll probably want to pull back altogether. So you need that discernment. So, as you say, those who are deserving and needy and poor, and by the way, the Bible does distinguish between the deserving and the undeserving poor. To the latter, it says, if you're not going to work, you shouldn't even eat, right? So Proverbs and all the rest are pretty clear about, you know, some are poor through no fault of their own, some Well, maybe it is their fault because they're lazy slobs and they need to get off their backside. So that's part of the equation. But yeah, a lot of things come to mind here, right? We, uh, well, I've even heard pastors talk about how, you know, they're walking down the street in the city, somebody's begging, they gave money straight away, no questions asked, and seem to imply this is the thing that Jesus would do. Well, a lot of us would probably ask a few questions. Well, You know, well, it depends, right? If this guy's a heroin addict who's only asking for money so he can get more heroin and take another hit, which could be his last, right? Uh, Is that the loving thing to do? Is that what Jesus would do? Or if the guy's an alcoholic, just wants the money to get another drink, is that something we're obligated to give the guy uh, money for? You know, often we say the best thing might be have a chat. If he's hungry, say, look, I'll I'll take you out for a meal or I'll buy you some food and I'll bring it back to you. That way, you know, at least that bit of your money, which is your stewardship and which we have to give an account of, is not being wasted or we're not giving, again, pearls before swine. So that would be just one of many uh, situations that arise where a bit of uh, prayer, wisdom, and thought is needed. Bill, context for that verse 42 might come in the verses that lead up to that. And uh, from verse 38 in that same chapter, you've heard it was Mm -hmm. said, I for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Mm. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. There is a call to generosity in there. But this thought of an evil person, uh, is this where the discernment comes? Am I dealing with someone who is authentic, genuine, or is this, in fact, someone who is a scammer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Good point. And I do mention in my piece two biblical principles of interpretation we always have to have. you got to have context, right? And you always must compare Scripture with Scripture, right? Uh, If this were the only verse about giving, the only verse about evil, well, you might say, okay, I guess that's what we do. But we have hundreds of passages about both topics, right? Um, as we said, if you won't, uh, you know, uh, the guy who won't work, uh, neither should he eat. So there's a principle of, you know, being responsible. But the thing about evil, right? Well, clearly, uh, we have to put that in context, compare with Scripture. Was Moses resisting evil, right? When he stood against Pharaoh or Elijah standing against Ahab, John the Baptist, right? Standing against Herod. These were all cases of resisting evil or Wilberforce, right? Resisting the evil slave trade. So surely whatever Jesus is saying there, it cannot go against these other biblical passages and examples. So I've written about pretty much all these things, turning the other cheek, the lex talionis, and so on. Um, A lot of it breaks down to, look, personally, you shouldn't be seeking revenge and retaliation, but that has nothing to do with, say, governments and the right to have a police force, an army to defend yourself, right? So there is a place to resist evil. So, yeah, this giving passage is in that context of dealing with enemies, dealing with those who might persecute you and so on. So we have to be reading this text in that light and try to get the bigger picture and you know, try to see, all right, what is the biblical response and what isn't? An old saying, it's not a biblical one, a fool and his money are soon parted. And mm. uh, there is a sense here, wise stewardship might be 
that we not allow ourselves to be fooled easily. And just to take this deeper, Bill, I mean, we're talking about individuals who might be trying to scam the Christian believer and take advantage of their generosity, uh, but uh, people who are giving their money uh, to church or uh, televangelists, and, and that's not a criticism because a lot of these genuine ministries, but I guess you've still got to be cautious, haven't you, wherever you're giving your money. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, I remember once long ago, my dad was still alive. He was, you know, he'd give money to everybody as a Christian. You know, he was poor, so five bucks here, five bucks there. And I I finally had to tell him, I mean, look, some of these guys have their mansions, the chandeliers, the Mercedes, the private jets. I don't think they really need your five dollars. But I know people in our own church, right, who want to be missionaries. They need missionary support. I told my dad. I think you could probably better spend your money with people you know and where that money is going. Help them out. I mean, you know, there's plenty of people want to help the the big cats on TV. If that's what you're led to do, then do it. But, uh, you know, I think a bit of wisdom again, what we're going to do. We want to avoid the scammers, obviously. Uh, we read stories about, you know, somebody gave away their life savings for some what prince in Nigeria, right, who's promised them millions and but I, I read about Christians who've done the same, Christians who were too gullible, too undiscerning, and they ended up losing heaps of money. I don't think Jesus wants to have us be, uh, you know, foolish. He wants us to be good stewards, right? Wise uh, as uh, serpents, harmless as doves, you know, all that stuff has to come into play here. Otherwise, you know, we're really not doing Christ and his kingdom any good if we're not using our brains and praying a bit. So a little extra scrutiny, wherever you are deciding to give money, uh, that would be good stewardship, that would be good wisdom. That's not just being swept along by the thought mm. that uh, I just need to give whenever anyone asks. Hey, you've also written another article this week, Bill, and it's a little bit along the same lines, and it's a growing issue that's happening in some nations uh, mm. where Christians are duping uh, not only the church but also uh, a nation when it comes to immigration issues uh, around their faith. Uh, what's, uh, what's happened with that? You call them rice Christians. Yeah, well, that was a big thing uh, in the UK, especially the Anglican Church. It seems a whistleblower finally blew the lid on this. Uh, basically, what was happening, all these asylum seekers were basically coming in, being baptized, given a very quick course on Christianity. And it turned out that many of them never were any such things. They certainly were not Christian. Some of them were still hardened criminals. Hardened Muslims. And so this whistleblower blower came along and said, this is like a conveyor belt of some gullible church leaders allowing people in almost with no questions asked. And they're basically scamming the church, right? Oh, we got baptized and we went to a few of your meetings. So now English government let us into your country. And a lot of the Anglican folks are saying, yes, we must look after these poor people. Well, there's legitimate cases, as we know, which, by the way, should go through the legitimate channels. But there's also scammers and con artists here, right? There's all kinds of people willing to do and say anything to be brought into the prosperous West. So, yeah, that piece looks in detail at how, you know, this made the headlines in the UK. And the reason I mentioned the phrase rice Christians, right, was, well, as you probably know, back, you know, a century or two ago, say in India, missionaries would come. And we know a lot of people would get converted in quotation marks, not because they wanted to become followers of Jesus. They wanted to get the rice, the food, the material benefits that went along with the Western missionaries. So it wasn't a spiritual benefit they were after. It was a material one. So that's what happened uh, right now in the Church of England with these asylum seekers. That's kind of a new version of the old warning against rice Christians. So, Bill, you could be at one side of a pendulum swinging and uh, not yeah. so much in the center. You might be ultra generous and yep. likely to be scammed. Uh, you yep. might, on the other side of the pendulum, be tight-fisted, penny-pinching, uh, yep. that sort of attitude. Somehow or other, you've got to be discerning in all of that, not allow yourself to be either end of the spectrum. 
Yeah, absolutely. So often we've said getting the biblical balance right is key. Um, yeah, what we have is not our own. We have no right to hang on to it. But also, if God blesses us with material goods, including money, he expects us to be good stewards, to be wise in our use of them. And that means not just throwing it away to anybody, including scam artists or Nigerian uh, princes who are promising you a million dollars if you only give them a few 10,000. Uh, you know, we just have to use our brains, be wise, be prayerful, be careful, and discern. Uh, Paul in Philippians says, well, love is key, but he says, let your knowledge and discernment. Sorry, if you're all lovey-dovey and run on feelings, but you have no knowledge, no discernment, you're really probably not going to help anybody. <laughs> well, the start of a new leaf of wisdom uh, might be in reading Bill's latest articles. Uh, the one we've been talking about today in particular, Difficult Bible Passages, Matthew chapter 5, verse 42 and uh, we did make some reference to to another article that Bill has written this week called Social Justice Warriors Rice Christians Revisited. You can find those articles at BillMuhlenberg.com or simply Google Culture Watch One Word. Bill, thanks so much for another great update today on 2020. Many thanks indeed. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.